Okay, everybody, welcome to another weekly market review session. Uh, let's get straight into it. Okay, so again, disclaimer, everybody, this is not financial advice. It's just our own opinions, uh, views, and references that we may make out on our social media. Okay, so let's check out the charts. Uh, a lot of things to share. Again, this is earnings season, earnings period. Uh, we had two major earnings that happened this week. Netflix and Tesla. So let's also take a look at that and how to go about your trading. Okay, so we are on the charts right now. I'm currently on my QQQ. Let's take a look at Tesla firstly. Okay, so like I mentioned last week, we had earnings and this is earnings seasons right now. Tesla and Netflix announced for themselves their respective earnings. And you can see very, very clearly that uh, after the earnings, okay, gap, right, gap down by Tesla and it has been moving down for the stock. So I think one thing that's pretty interesting is that, uh, again, naturally, if you've been trading in the markets for a while, stocks or stock prices tend to move or like to go to whole numbers, okay? And if you look at Tesla, you know, it's been on this rally for itself, okay, for since May, okay, for from a, end of April, start of May, all the way till now, there's a major rally up by the stock. And literally for itself, looking like it was going to go to 300, okay, but ended up just slightly under 299.33 and started to pull back. And before market closed, all right, uh, after market closed, sorry, it announced its earnings and then it had a gap down for the stock. Okay, so very simply again, you can see the way Tesla has moved coming back down to fill the gap over here. All right, so the gap fill over here, you can see very clearly that the stock price dropped to fill this gap. Okay, and now if it does continue to drop some more, may come all the way down here to fill the next gap over here which is around my 230, 240 area, okay? So that's for Tesla. But again, you know, typically stocks, they like to go to or try to go to whole numbers. And because of earnings, uh, Tesla couldn't reach it just slightly under. So again, for Tesla, such a big company, where do I think it might go? I think, you know, it might continue to pull back down some more for the stock, uh, maybe chalk sideways for the near term. Okay, but I think long term for the stock, definitely, uh, of course, if all goes well, if markets are still healthy, uh, it still goes up as what we are seeing right now, then eventually you can hit the $300 price for the stock. Okay, uh, if you take a look at something like Apple, right? Apple also had something similar as well. Uh, if you look at it, okay, so if you look at it really nicely. I think from March, from March for the stock, all the way till July, it's been in a straight uptrend, very nicely, respecting my 20 moving average and just going up. You can see, all right, every time it went to my 20, it just found support over there and just kept on going up and up and up and up. Okay, so very interesting stuff by Apple. Uh, it's been going up. And I also was expecting the stock to at least hit 200 eventually, whole number. Looked like it was going there, but you can see it got stopped at right around 198. Okay, around 198 for the stock. So earnings for Apple, you know, is coming out on the 3rd August. And I'm going to, you know, be cautious on this as well, because now it's already pulling back. If earnings is announced and something misses, maybe they miss guidance or revenue isn't up to par, then we may see Apple drop some more as well. Okay. So one thing to understand, you know, uh, during earnings, it's always a random event. Uh, it's a 50-50 luck kind of event. You can't predict what's going to happen. So best, you know, if you're not familiar on how to go about these volatile markets or volatile time, to sit out of the markets, just observe and wait for the major earnings to be announced and then come back into the markets okay so for people if you're familiar with like day trading for yourself i would say right now for this week it's more of a day trading style kind of market if you're doing swings then navigate carefully 
uh, make sure you're going in for quick trades and taking your profits as soon as they are offered for your respective trades. Okay, so even Apple as well couldn't break or couldn't hit 200 and uh, it's now pulling back for the stock already. Okay, so we'll definitely come down to test the 20 EMA. Uh, earnings, I think, will decide whether it goes down further from here and it breaks the trend it has been on for the past, you know, three to four months for the stock. Okay, now, if I take a look at, say, the US 100, okay, so US 100, my NASDAQ, uh, something very interesting as well. So, if I draw my Fibonacci, okay, if I draw my Fibonacci over here, start over from the top, and I draw this wave up, Okay, you can see very, very clearly over here that right now prices are down to my 0 0.5 levels. Okay, so it's retraced about 50%. And I think right now it's chopping sideways. Where can it go? Well, very simply with all the earnings, I think it can pull back a bit more. My 0 0.61 level is a strong level. Okay, so why am I saying it's a strong level? Very simple. Number one, okay, uh, when it comes to FIBO, your 0 0.382, 0 0.5, and 0 0.618, these are normally the three levels that we look at that stocks tend to retrace to consistently or come back to often, okay? Next thing is that my 0 0.618 level is also in line with my 20 moving average, okay? So my 20 moving or my moving averages are also support and resistance lines, and it's also in line with that so there is the confluence of these two factors. Now, lastly, you can see that I've drawn a blue line over here. Uh, again, if you can't see it, I'll just redraw it. So there's one over here. Okay, so this blue line that I've drawn over here, and very simply, why is because you can see previously when the stock when QQQ is moving up, it hit here, pull back down to my 20 EMA. Hit here again, pull back down. Finally, it broke over here and we had a rally up. Okay. So again, once a resistance is broken, it is turned into a new support level. So what's going to happen is that again, it, since now the uh, QQQ is pulling back for uh, the short term. Okay. I think it may come to as low as here and even test this next support level. So you can see where this support level is, is also around my 20 EMA and 0.618 levels. Okay. So this area over here is a strong level. It's a strong point. Okay. It's a strong confluence of factors. So be aware and pay attention to this. Now, if it breaks below this area, all right, below my 20 EMA, below this uh, blue line, then... I think we can say that the short-term trend has changed. Uh, I will be definitely looking at more or a little bit more shorting positions. Now, do I think we are uh, out of the bull market at that point? No, definitely not. But I think it is a stronger pullback. And I feel like we need a stronger pullback to happen in the markets. Okay. So why do I say that? Number one. Okay. Very, very obvious. The fear and greed index, everybody. Right. Fear and greed index. Still very high. We're still at 82. We're still at extreme greed. It's been like this for, you know, one month ago, for the past week as well. Coming to two months, it definitely cannot stay here. And we will start seeing this come down, uh, you know, for the short-term future soon enough. Okay. And I think the market just need a catalyst and earnings are going to be that catalyst that start pulling back the markets. Now, second thing is this, Okay. If I look at uh, the seasonality, so if you look very carefully over here, once we hit end July, okay, once we hit end July, we will, or you see August, it actually starts pulling back for the stock. Okay, starts pulling back down. So that's how it works for uh, the seasonality for S&P. So again, being an extreme greed, I think we need to have a pullback. August is also a month where season, uh, seasonality-wise, it has also pulled back. Okay? So I think we can expect that. Now, next thing, Forex Factory. 
So this week, if I look at high impact events, there's just one that I really want you to focus on. And that is happening on Thursday, 2 a.m. Okay, depending on where you're from, but in Singapore, Malaysia over here is 2 a.m. Federal funds rate. So what is this? This is interest rate hikes, everybody. All right, this is FOMC. This is interest rate hikes. And again, this one's going to be important because for the, uh, what do you call this? Previous times we have seen with CPI, with the data, the inflation has been coming down and has hit lows for the current future. And previously, or the current term, and previously, the Federal Reserve actually did not increase the interest rates. Okay, I think they kept it constant. Now, if you look at the forecast over here, right, they are planning on another hike to, of another 0.25%. So previously, there was a lot of talk about them keeping it constant, about keeping it fixed. They're not going to in increase anymore. And now they are planning, or if you look at analysts, they're forecasting another 0.25% increase. So again, I depending on how markets are going to react to this, also with earnings here, it may be the catalyst that will pull back the markets and give us the well-deserved pullback. Okay? And last factor for myself, the right? last factor uh, you can do a Google search on this, uh, the VIX seasonality. But I thought this photo was very interesting. And you can see that basically the red line is how the VIX has been for 2023. Okay. And if you look at it, gen the black lines and the gray lines are how the VIX typically are, all right, how the VIX typically is or are um, throughout the last 10 to 20 years for the VIX index. And you can see that for this year, the red line uh, typically has been going down. And for the first half of the year, if you look seasonality wise, typically it also goes up. So VIX, for those of you that don't know, is the volatility index. It uh, tells you again how volatile the markets are. Typically if it's bullish, less volatility. Bearish people are afraid. Okay, there's more volatility in the markets. So typically this is down. But if you look at the second half of the year, what happens is that it actually starts to go back up and it's a bit more volatile. Okay, it's a bit more volatile. So again, when this also goes up, typically the pullbacks are a lot stronger as well. So moving into the second half of the year, I think the markets will definitely have its pullbacks. Uh, I think there might be stronger pullbacks. The VIX also has to go up. Right now, we are at all-time lows. Uh, if we go and see the VIX right now, okay, you see the VIX right now as well. On the daily. Okay. You can see my two lines already broke my 19.5. And we've just been at this low point over here. Okay. Really low point. Lower than where we were back in like 2021. Okay. So it's really very, very low for the VIX. So I expect this to slowly start making its way back up in the second half of the year. Definitely uh, will mean that there will be stronger pullbacks in the market. Okay. So if I take, for example, something like SPY, okay, we look at the daily, oh, yeah, we look at the daily chart. Okay. Okay, we look at the daily chart. You can see very obviously that, you know, uh, when it's early part of the year, okay, it has its pullbacks over here, over here, uh, not so over here as well, not so insane. And then when you come to the later part of the year, the pullbacks get a bit more insane, a bit more drastic as well. Okay. So that's where I'm seeing with the, the VIX, with the markets. That's why I say we do need a stronger pullback. I think it is coming. We need a catalyst. Earnings is that. Interest rate hikes is also this week. So just approach your trading very cautiously as well. Okay. Now, for tech stocks, like I said, US 100. Okay. Just be on the lookout. Okay, be on the lookout. Like I told you, Fibonacci, when you draw my 0 0.618 level. Okay, that's going to be, I think, the, the, the point on whether you switch to, uh, to really shorting the market. Okay, but if it holds that level, starts going back up, then I will look there for or start timing my uh, position trades or swing trades for myself. Okay. So just be aware this week got high impact event, which is interest rate hikes. 
just be aware other earnings are also happening. So manage that carefully when you're going about your trading this week. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's it. That's all I have for this week, the market review. So again, trade carefully. Stay safe, guys. Okay. Don't be rushing into your trades. Uh, like I mentioned, this is more of a day trading week. If you can't get a gauge, can sit out this week as well. Wait for next week to uh, go into positions. Okay. This week can be just wait, looking for setups. Okay. And going in once it is clear. Okay. Now, with uh, the US 100, again, what you can do also for yourself, you can draw this trend line. Okay. It's a very steep trend line. But again, what I will do is I will draw this and I will draw a horizontal line here. Okay. So this is a previous swing high. And what I would expect if I am talking about it being bullish is it needs to break my trend line and needs to break above this point for me to see that this is reversing and going back up to take bullish trades. Okay. But if it doesn't do this, then uh, I'm saying the market is not weak. It's not strong at all. Sorry, the market is uh, not strong. It is weak and cannot push up higher. <laughs> okay. Now, All right. Typically, if you draw very steep trend lines, for example, if I draw over here, okay, you can see very easily the line gets broken. Okay. But for this, QQ really been dropping hard and fast on this. And again, because techs have been the one rallying the market. So draw this for your chart. Also draw your horizontal line over here. This is a previous swing high. If it can break, then proper reversal back up. If not, then wait for it. Break the 61.8. Breaks further, then maybe for the short term, you can take some quick short trades or plan for position trades or longer term swing trades. Okay. Uh, I'm still bullish on the market just for the short term, near term future. I think we see, I, I see weakness definitely needs to go lower. Okay. So that's it for me for this week's review. Uh, take care guys stay safe a lot of earnings coming up uh, just navigate the markets carefully alright so I'll see you next week for next week's market review video